Hi, this is Peter Jacobs with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at deflections. We're going to be doing a kind of a brief overview of, uh, of deflections and how we're going to be using that in CalcBook, and then some videos later on will get more detailed um, into specific deflection diagrams and calculations for both steel and concrete beams. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's let's talk a little bit about deflection before we go ahead and do any uh, problems here. So let's look at both steel beams and concrete beams. So for steel beams, it's pretty straightforward, right? We use our moment of inertia and our modulus of elasticity for steel. All right, for moment of inertia, that's going to look like your BH cubed over 12 and then your you know parallel axis theorem, things like that. But for most steel beams, pretty much anything that we you know use out of the book, right? We're just going to go to the tables and pull that information uh, for moment of inertia uh, for that specific shape pretty straightforward um, for concrete beams however it's a little bit more complicated right for moment of inertia we use the effective moment of inertia uh, which can either be the gross section so just using your you know moment of inertia calculations like bh cubed over 12 and your parallel axis theorems if you have a t-beam or something like that um, but then we have something called cracked moment of inertia right which is based on this cracked moment value so if the applied moment the service moment is less than or equal to two-thirds of this cracked moment then you use just the regular gross moment of inertia but if your service moment demand is greater than two-thirds of the cracked moment then you have to use this effective moment of inertia calculation um, which includes a bunch of things the cracked moment of inertia and then you're using kind of a ratio of your cracked moment to your service moment um, and a few other things in there to get what your effective moment of inertia is so in this video we're not going to go deep into how to calculate that for concrete we'll do that in another in another video uh, but just wanted to point that out that there is a, a pretty big difference in how you calculate the deflection uh, for a concrete beam versus a steel beam. And then for the modulus of elasticity for concrete, uh, pretty straightforward calculation there, uh, just your unit weight of concrete, uh, which for normal weight concrete uh, calculates out to you know something that most of you have seen, which is 57,000 times square root of F prime C. So that's what it looks like, kind of a quick overview of steel and concrete beams for deflection, right? So let's go ahead and look at our problem statement. And this should look familiar. We've, we've used this same loading condition in the last few videos, so we'll continue to use it. So we've got a 20 foot long beam. It's got a distributed live load of 1.5 kip per foot. It's got two dead loads, uh, two point load dead loads, one at three and a half feet of three kips and another of uh, at 13 feet uh, of five kips. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and get started on deflections. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. Um, we could select either steel or concrete uh, to, to look at deflection, but uh, for right now, we're going to look at steel. Like I said, in, a, in another video, we'll get more uh, into uh, concrete deflection and how that works. But for now, let's click into our steel design. We'll look at our member design, and then we're going to look at steel members, and we'll just click on flexure so that we can bring up the uh, deflection graph. So we'll go ahead and select a shape. It didn't say in the problem statement, but we'll just go ahead and say uh, wide flange, and then we can just pick you know W18 by 21. We are going to use our beam loading uh, and our ASCE load combinations. Um, so we can go ahead and click into the beam loading tab. Right, and first thing we need to do is define the beam length. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, 20 feet. And the analysis location, the problem statement didn't say, but let's go ahead and, and try to find the deflection at x equals 15 feet from the left, right? This will uh, designate, you can see here, this red dotted line uh, where uh, the section cut basically is going to be taken to find the internal forces, uh, shear and moment, as well as the deflection uh, at this specific location at x equals 15. So we'll go ahead and use an x equals 15. And then we need to apply our loading. So we've got a uh, two point loads for dead load. We've got a uh, three kip load at three and a half feet from the left end. We've also got another dead load. Uh, we've got, let's see here, five kips at 13 feet from the left end. We've got a distributed live load of uh, 1.5 foot. Oh, that's a point load. It's the uniform load. 1.5 kip per foot. So we've got our loading in, uh, and we've got our three graphs here, shear, moment, and deflection. And for deflection, right, we want to look at our service load. So if we go to the load combination dropdown and go to the bottom here, we can have the different options here for our service. So we can have dead plus live, our live only, um, and then you know snow, wind, and earthquake. So for us, we're going to look at our dead plus live. 
and we can look down here and see what our deflection is, right? Our maximum deflection is going to be near the middle, uh, right? Because that distributed load sort of dominates the deflection diagram. But we have uh, chosen this x equals 15 location for our deflection. So from here, uh, if we go to the deflection tab, right, we uh, have our uh, capacity limits here. So we've pulled these uh, limits out of the code. You can obviously edit these uh, if you need, you know, you have for dead and live or live only. Uh, if you have more stringent criteria or less stringent criteria, uh, you can change these values uh, for what your uh, what your design requires. And you can adjust, adjust those for both strong and weak axis. And we click into the demand, right? It's going to automatically bring over uh, uh, the deflections for both the dead and the live load. So we've got about 0.6 inches for dead deflection and 1.7 uh, inches for live. And that is at x equals 15. So if we change uh, the analysis location, it will update these deflections accordingly. And then we go into our calculation here. So our live only is 1.76, right? We have nothing in the weak axis. So it looks like our live only uh, criteria is controlling, right? Otherwise, it would have given us the dead plus live load combination here. So then we go to our allowable deflection, right? And it's going to give us the limits here, uh, our L over that 360, right? And that, or L over 240, right? And that L over 240 uh, is what is going to control there. Or excuse me, our L over uh, 360 is what is going to control there for the live only. So, uh, we, had, we chose a pretty small beam, so our deflection is pretty large, right? But that's kind of the, the introduction there to deflections. And like I said, we'll have some more videos uh, with concrete uh, kind of showcasing how that works uh, with uh, the crack section modulus. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.